Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video, we are going to continue analyzing some sentences, looking for the verbals and identifying them and assigning the roles within the sentence. So, once again, I advise you to try and do these uh, sentences, try to, to analyze these sentences uh, before I provide the answers, right? That is going to help you much more than if you just look at me providing the answers. It is the first, uh, the, the third sentence actually that we are analyzing. Uh, the employees that were fired have been instructed not to leave the premises until the union leader shows up. Now, I can see that I have different verbs over here, right? I can see the verb were fired, I can see the verb have been instructed, and I can see the verb uh, shows up. So, I have multiple verbs, and why am I mentioning this? Please remember, this is very important that you identify verbs so that you can check if you have com uh, compound forms of verbs. If you have compound forms of verbs, it's, it's most likely, it's very likely, not most likely, it's very likely that you might have, you might have a verbal inside those verb forms, especially, not especially, particularly when we have a passive voice and when we have a perfective form. And also it's important to pay attention to the verbs because remember that particularly regular verbs in the past have the same form as the past participles of said verbs. So it's easy if we are not reading the sentence carefully, if we are not paying attention to this, that we classify uh, verbs as past participles. So please bear this in mind. So anyway, I see that the first verb form were fired is in passive voice, yes? The employees that were fired. Somebody fired them, right? But that someone is not in the subject position. So I go ahead and say fired is a past participle and it's part of passive voice, right? Fired, past participle, part of passive voice. And then I have this curious case. Have been instructed. What's going on here? I want you to check. You have here the past participle being and you have the past participle instructed. How do, how do I know that these are past participles? How do you know so easily, teacher? Well, because I know that being is a past participle, right? But how do you know instructed is a past participle? Well, because of this. Check the meaning. Uh, the past tense of, uh, of verb B is fue o estuvo o era o estaba. And the past form of instructed is instruyó instruyeron in any, in any other conjugation that we make with a different subject in Spanish, right? And uh, remember that past participles assume an ending ado ido. Yes? Like in this case, habían sido despedidos. Didos. Yes? Han sido instruidos. Right? So that makes me know that these are past participles if I need to use my native language, well, our native language, most likely. Uh, if you are watching this video, you are one of my students, so you may also speak Spanish, of course. But anyway, uh, going on, uh, let me, allow me to continue. Uh, being instructed, I have two past participles in this verb form. Now, I don't want you to get nervous. I'm gonna show you how easy it is. I'm going to give you a shortcut when you have this perfective, this passive perfective constructions. If this happens to you, if you have been in another past participle, rest assured that the first past participle, in other words, being is always going to be part of passive voice. 
being is always going to be part of passive voice, but I insist this happens only if the verbal construction is passive perfective. It has to be passive perfective. And then the second the second uh, past participle, in this case instructed, is going to be a past participle part of a perfective form. Now, let's move on. Ah, teacher, don't you include phrases with past participles? Uh, well, no, not really. Uh, not in these cases because they are part of verbal forms. If the past participle is an adjective, then it's likely that I may have an adverb that modifies the adjective. If the past, uh, that, that would be the case in which I could say, okay, yes, I can have a modifier for the past participle. I can have an adjective for the past participle, uh, an adverb, excuse me. But other than that, no. So in those, in these particular cases, that's not gonna happen. All right, moving on. Uh, not to leave the premises until the union leader shows up. Now, I can clearly see, I don't know if you already saw this, that this phrase is a direct object. Did you realize? The employees that were fired have been instructed. No, excuse me, it's actually not a direct object. Uh -huh. Why is it not a direct object? Who can think of the reason why it's not a direct object? I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about it. Think about it really hard. So, you got it? It is not a direct object, even though it answers the question what after the verb, because it does. Let's check it out. The employees that were fired have been instructed what? They have been instructed not to leave. Not to leave what? Ah, not to leave the premises. Not to leave until, until when? Ah, not to leave the premises until the union leader shows up. Okay, all of this, not to leave the premises until the union leader shows up, is actually, yes, is actually the infinitive phrase. Now, the question is, why is it not a direct object? If it answers the question what after the verb, why do I not classify this as a direct object? Because of this, because of this being, this being is telling me that this is passive voice. This verb system have been instructed, tells me that this is passive voice, right? This is passive voice. So this has to be a retained object. And uh, I don't have any more infinite, not any more verbals in this sentence. So let's move on to the next one. Fighting her impulse to slap the man, Roberta simply turned around and walked away in a dignified manner. Now, I ask you, who did the action of fighting the impulse to slap the man? Who was fighting the impulse? Roberta, now, if you can do that, if you can see that this subject is the same doer as this action, yes, then allow me to give you another shortcut and say that this is a present participial phrase. Now, again, remember how we identify the phrases? Fighting what? Okay, do I have an object? Yes. Fighting what? Her impulse. What impulse? Ah, the impulse to slap the impulse to slap the man. So that's why I classify all of these phrases. Fighting her impulse to slap the man is a present participle phrase acting as an adjective. And again, inside this present participial phrase, I find an infinitive phrase right here to slap the man, to slap the man, okay? So this, to slap the man, I already gave you the answer already. Uh, I already gave you the answer, to be honest. 
so as for you to figure out the function of this phrase. I told you what impulse, right? What impulse was she fighting? She was not fighting any impulse. She was fighting the particular impulse to slap the man. So I can confidently say that to slap the man is an infinitive phrase. A noun and acting as, excuse me, an adjective. It's an adjective because it's modifying impulse. Then I continue reading. Roberta simply turned around and walked away in a dignified manner. Teacher, those are past participles, turned around and walked away. No, they are not past participles, they are the verb forms, right? This is past tense and this is past tense. That's why I tell you that you have to be very careful with uh, regular verbs in past because sometimes we can get confused with past participles. But remember that the past participle is going to take a meaning ado ido. Again, this applies for people who speak Spanish. If you speak other languages, of course, this might not be helpful for you right now. And we don't have any more. Oh, yes, we have one more verbal in this sentence. Dignified. Dignified. See the ed is modifying manner. So I can see that dignified is a past participle. Yes, acting as an adjective. And then we get to the last model in this guided practice. Chamomile is used to treat multiple problems like insomnia, anxiety, and digestion issues. Its soothing effects have long been praised. So um, I can see that I can see that. Sorry, I, I got distracted for a second. I can see that I have this past participle, right, used. I can see this infinitive to treat. I need to decide, right, if it's only an infinitive or if it's an infinitive phrase. And I can see to treat what? Ah, to treat multiple problems. Like what problems? Ah, multiple problems like insomnia, anxiety, and digestion issues, all of these. And then I see this ing, its soothing effects have long been praised. Okay, being and praised. This is going to be faster. You already know about this. This is not uh, the used to to express a uh, past habit. This means uh, used, like people use it in some way, right? So this is a past participle acting as part of passive voice. Is used what for? What for do we use chamomile? Ah, I want to know the purpose. So I can say that to treat multiple problems like insomnia, anxiety, and digestion issues, right? It's an infinitive phrase acting as an adverb. Then soothing, right? Soothing effects. I can see that soothing is acting as a modifier for effects. So it's a present participle acting as an adjective. And if you remember, I already told you this, here we have a passive perfective construction have long been praised, have been praised, right? So if we remember what I told you, then being, we know it's a past participle acting as part of passive voice and praised is going to be a past participle acting as part of the perfective form. See, being past participle, part of passive voice, and praised past participle part of a perfective form. All right, guys, and this was a very short practice, a very short guided practice, and uh, this is going to help us to understand better how we do the analysis. I hope it helped you to understand how to decide if we have uh, a verbal phrase, okay? And in the next video, I am going to continue talking about some uh, interesting uh, details and information on verbals. Until the next video, guys. Bye-bye.